Hey everybody, Dr. O here. So real quickly, I want to wish myself a happy birthday. So yesterday was my 45th birthday, so I'm pretty excited to uh, to be happier and healthier than I've ever been in my entire life. And that's why I'm here to try to help others uh, achieve that same goal. Um, so what's this image here? I'm super excited about this next video series that I'm working on because if you've ever taken my intermittent fasting course, you've seen this. You've seen Dr. O's Fat Loss Roadmap and it's got a long list of things on there. But the question is, what is the program actually built around? What's the common thread that ties every one of these points together? And it is this, how to lose fat and preserve or even build muscle. Right? I've never been one to talk about losing weight as quickly as possible. I'm constantly talking about ways to make sure you're losing fat while preserving muscle. That's what the program is actually built around. It's not even really built around intermittent fasting. It's built around doing that. How can you determine how much fat you can lose but not lose muscle? And this, and this program is going to give you as many tips as I can think of. So why do I care so much about this? It's because honestly, weight loss is easy. Fat loss is much more difficult, right? The main reason is your body determines what to use for fuel. If you could actually force your body to burn fat and just fat, then the solution to weight loss issues or weight gain issues would just be starving yourself constantly, wiring your mouth shut, taping your mouth shut until you reach your goal weight and then you stop. But we can't do that. So the goal is to find the fat loss sweet spot and figure out how to lose as much fat as you can without losing muscle, right? So let's start by talking about why it's so important to hit that bullseye and protect our lean mass at all cost. So why should you care? Number one is muscle is a glucose disposal sink, right? The more muscle you have, the more glucose you can dispose of. And that's because it's really cool. When your muscles contract during physical activity, your muscle cells are able to take up glucose and use it for energy without insulin. So whether insulin is available or not, this means that muscle can help you control your blood sugar, improve your insulin sensitivity over time, and even help prevent or treat type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. If you're insulin resistant, you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting insulin to take glucose into your muscle cells. But physical activity will allow you to use glucose without even needing insulin. So that's, that's a really big one. Number two, muscle just looks good, right? You don't want to end up at the end of your weight loss program. You don't want to end up just being a smaller version of yourself. And you definitely don't want your body fat percentage to go up while the scale goes down, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to look and feel your best. But if I'm being honest, I think muscle looks a lot better with skin on top of it, but that's just me. All right. Muscle doesn't just look good. Muscle keeps you strong and functional as well, right? Muscle makes doing everything easier. I know because I've gotten so much more muscle and gotten so much more strong um, over the last couple of years. The things that I can do now, I never could have done in the beginning, right? Muscle improves your bone density, improves your balance, right? So if you want to age well, the best advice I can give you is to take as much lean mass with you into the second half of your life. It's that important. But why should you really care, right? So these are all good reasons to care about muscle, but why should you really care in the context of a weight loss program? It's because your lean mass levels determine your resting metabolic rate. There's other factors, of course, but your lean mass is, is a big factor in determining your resting or basal metabolic rate, and it's the one that you have the most control over, right? So this graph is actually from the most important metabolism study ever done. It's from um, Herman Ponser et al. I'll cover this study a lot more in future videos, but I just want you to see this image right now. Now, on the bottom, you see fat-free mass in kilograms. On the left, you see total energy expenditure in millijoules per day. A millijoule is 239 calories, but we just care about these black lines. As fat-free mass goes up, energy expenditure also goes up. So your lean mass is a key way that you can control your metabolic rate. So adding lean mass would be a good thing, but losing lean mass will lower your metabolic rate, which will make future weight loss more and more difficult and lead to weight loss plateaus, but it gets even worse than that. Losing lean mass makes you more likely to regain your lost weight and then some, right? This is called collateral fattening. So let's take a look at it. So you've probably lost weight before. I've lost weight dozens of times. You've also probably gained it all back and then some. Right? So usually when you're done with a diet and you quote unquote recover from a diet, you actually weigh more than when you began. One of the reasons is that you lost muscle along the way. Right? We've already said losing muscle will cause your metabolic rate to drop, but it also appears to lead to what are called metabolic adaptations that typically lead to regaining more weight than you lost. That's this collateral fattening. So metabolic adaptations, that's the survival mode people talk about. It's how your body responds to weight loss with changes of its own. And if you're losing lean mass, there's going to be a larger metabolic adaptation. So let's take a look. 
So what's the science have to say? Collateral fattening in body composition autoregulation. It's determinants and significance for obesity predisposition. So let me read a quote and then make sense of it. Under these conditions, persistent hyperphagia driven by the need to complete the recovery of lean tissue will result in the excess fat deposition and fat overshooting. So what does that mean? If you lose lean mass while you gain weight, you're going to have persistent hyperphagia, increased hunger. Your, your body's going to want you to eat and eat and eat until you recover the lean tissue. But while you're recovering lean tissue, you're also going to be adding fat. Ask any strength athlete or bodybuilder when they're putting on muscle, they, they almost have to put on some fat with it. Well, that's what's happening is your body recovers lean tissue as well. So this means that people who lose lean mass on a diet are more likely to gain that weight back because of extra hunger and metabolic adaptation. This also means that one of the main reasons your body tries to get you to gain lost weight back is to recover lean tissue. So guess what? It won't need to do that if you don't lose it in the first place. That's why preserving lean mass is like rule number one in any of my programs. So why, why should you care again? It doesn't have to be this way, right? I'm living proof of what can happen. I was able to boost my resting metabolic rate by 181 calories per day by adding 15 pounds of lean mass and improving my hormone function. Obviously, I did lots of different things along the way, but most people that lose as much weight as I did lose see a drop in their metabolic rate. Mine went up 181 calories per day. That's 66,065 calories per year. That's the equivalent of almost 19 pounds of fat in an increase in metabolic rate while I lost an entire human, right? So here's the list. The first five things we're going to cover. The list is going to get longer than this, but these are, these are the top five things that I want to cover. So you see here, number one is finding the best calorie deficit. Number two is the rate of weight loss. Number three is physical activity and exercise. Number four, eating enough protein. Number five, managing sleep and stress. And I kind of bundle those two together. I credit this list for being the reason I was able to build muscle and boost my metabolic rate while losing right 180 pounds of fat, while losing an entire human's worth of fat. I also credit this, right? Finding my fat loss sweet spot for being the fact that I never had a weight loss plateau during the entire first year of my program. I've never said that before in a video, but it's absolutely true. Um, every time I, I stepped on the scale, I had made progress, right? Every single time in the entire first year of my program, I did talk in another video about taking diet breaks that I even lost weight during my first scheduled maintenance phase. I lost three pounds in, in, my, in a six week break from my diet. So in that entire first year, when I went from 414 pounds to 244 pounds, I never had a plateau. I never had a week where I didn't make progress. It wasn't until the second year that I had my first weight loss stall or weight loss plateau. So that, that's a huge deal. I credit my metabolic metabolic rate and physical activity for going up, going up while my weight was going down for being the reason. Okay. So I can't do a deep dive into each of these topics in this series, right? Just too much to cover. I've done entire courses on some of these points. And by the end, I plan on doing entire courses on all of these points. So, so, so I've done, I've done some courses, but I, I also will point you to other videos where I've, where you can learn even more. So you'll see in, in these videos, I'll be pointing you to videos that I've already released so you can learn more information. All right. So I'm going to start this series by looking at these five points individually, right? Looking at the key ways that you can get into your fat loss sweet spot and preserve as much lean mass or even increase your lean mass while you go. Then we're going to look at signs that you are losing lean mass, as well as ways you can track your progress and you can identify these small problems before, before they become huge roadblocks. So I'm super excited. I hope you are as well and hope this video helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.